Okay, I think you'd have to be living under a rock to have not heard all of the negativity surrounding the PlayStation VR 2 lately. And because of that, I think that I need to restore a little bit of balance in the world. And not because I want to sugarcoat anything, but because I actually have a completely different perspective. Personally, after coming out of years of nothing but indie titles and nearly no big budget support, I find it impossible to see the past year as anything other than fantastic. And that of course is due to the three major platforms involved here. And yes, to a large degree, that includes the PlayStation VR 2. I also think that we all need to get a little bit better at not letting someone's opinion affect us emotionally. We all have different opinions and perspectives on everything in life. And just because some of these people are stating their opinion on a large platform doesn't mean that it's true, especially when they themselves are admitting that they could totally be wrong and are even hoping so. Even all of the negativity typically comes from a good place and it's because we all want Sony to care. And from some people's perspective, they don't. So because of all of this, I really wanted to give you my perspective because in many ways, I think that it's baffling that there's any negativity at all in regards to the PlayStation VR 2, considering the role that it played and how absolutely phenomenal last year was for VR gaming. In many ways, I feel like only one side of the story is being told. And from a certain perspective, you can't blame anyone for being upset. And I'll get into all of that as well. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I play on all major platforms. I love the Quest platform, I love the PC VR platform, and I love the PlayStation VR too. And because I love each platform equally, I have no problem pointing out the strengths and weaknesses of each one. And it's really the pros and cons of each headset that really make them all relatively equal for me. I have zero emotional attachment to one specific platform, but I do have an emotional attachment to VR as a whole. I have a burning passion for this industry and I know that 99% of people watching this video share that same level of passion. For me, of course, 95% of that has to do with gaming. And so like many of you, I'm always looking out for the next Half-Life Alex. Of course I enjoy simulations or relatively gimmicky immersive games. I even just enjoy games with great VR mechanics, even if they're not the deepest. I pretty much love all genres, but the games that I chase the most are the games that have potential to be the greatest VR games of all time. So I spoke about this in depth in a recent video, but it's relevant here to mention again that I think 90% of the VR gamers out there who've been around for a long time would agree that before last year, the majority of the greatest VR games of all time came from the years of 2017 to 2020. Whether you were on PC playing Half-Life Alex, Stormland, Asgard's Wrath or Lone Echo, or if you were on the original PlayStation VR playing Astrobot, Resident Evil 7, Farpoint, or Firewall. Of course, all of that slowed down because of two things. For one, the original PlayStation VR was at the end of its life cycle, and due to the older control scheme, developers just kind of gave up on that platform knowing that the next-gen PlayStation VR 2 was coming. The other thing was Meta's pivot to standalone. While the platform had plenty of games releasing and many indie studios began to rise to the occasion, it still couldn't really hold a candle to all of the AAA games that Meta was funding back in the glory days of PC VR. We were waiting for the balance of optimization and processing power to improve. But if you were around for those amazing games from 2017 to 2020, then gaming largely felt like it took a nosedive. And then came along 2023, a year that brought along the PlayStation VR 2 and the MetaQuest 3. It had been years since we've seen multiple AAA games drop in one year, let alone multiple AAA games on multiple different platforms. And they did not disappoint. In fact, the entire year was phenomenal for VR gaming as a whole. We're talking about the PC VR version of Vertigo 2, Quest with Assassin's Creed Nexus and Asgard's Wrath 2, a game that is unquestionably one of the greatest VR games ever made. And then four AAA games on the PlayStation VR 2 plus other high quality exclusives on all major platforms. And then you add all of the third party multi-platform games. When you look back at the year of 2023, it might even be the greatest year that we've ever seen for VR gaming. Shout out to Virtual Strangers. During their 2023 show, they had this epic thumbnail of sunshine and rainbows, but everyone had their VR headsets on and pitchforks out. And I think that image was the perfect analogy for what we have been going through. I can't think of a time that VR gaming was ever better than it is right now with such an adverse reaction from the community. The jaded nature of the VR enthusiast seems to be getting worse. Even with all of this, we still managed to walk out of such an incredible year with a lot of people oddly pessimistic. But why? Before I get into the real problem with Sony, I'd like to talk about what they did right. Because what they got right heavily outweighs any of the negativity surrounding any of this. And that's the games that we got. I do not at all understand the people who ask where the games are at or where the support from Sony is. If you compare the PlayStation VR 2 exclusives with the Quest exclusives of last year, Meta did have some phenomenal top tier exclusives that did enter my all time great list. 
but so did Sony, and Sony had more of them. In fact, I would actually say that when you include the entire back catalog that the Quest has been building for years, I still think that the top five PlayStation VR 2 exclusives are better toe to toe than the top five exclusives on Quest. And keep in mind, this is coming from someone who truly does believe that the Quest 3 is a better headset for new VR users and is clearly the more versatile device. And I don't think anyone is really arguing that. I think that the Quest platform is phenomenal and it's probably the platform that I play on the most. And that platform specifically has one very influential asset Set behind it. But we'll get into that later. And I think it is the key difference that is causing people to think that Sony does not care. I want to put something into perspective really quick. Sony has three to five gaming events per year, whether we're talking about state of plays or gaming showcases. Sometimes we get two VR games, sometimes we get four, sometimes they're multi-platform, sometimes they're exclusive. Meta, on the other hand, only has one gaming showcase every year. And with that gaming showcase, they bring out the big guns and show us all the great games that are coming out over the next year. Last year's gaming showcase from Meta was incredibly successful, showing things like Asgard's Wrath 2, Assassin's Creed Nexus, Dungeons of Eternity, Vampire the Masquerade Justice, Racket Club, Underdogs, Ghostbusters, and Bulletstorm, just to name the ones that have released so far. Every one of these games besides Bulletstorm and Ghostbusters has received raving reviews from everyone who plays. Meta really knocked it out of the park with this one, showing that Meta actually started getting back to their old ways of funding high quality VR gaming. Of course, this has to do with what I talked about earlier. The platform is starting to reach that balance between optimization and processing power. AAA games are now possible on standalone hardware, and third-party developers are starting to master the standalone craft. So the next meta gaming showcase coming up is actually going to be very exciting because it's going to be very interesting to see if they can keep up with the momentum that they started last year. Now, with all of this being said, let's do this. Let's pretend Sony does the same thing. Instead of having numerous gaming showcases throughout the year that are completely unpredictable, where they sprinkle in VR games, let's pretend that Sony decided to do one huge state of play with nothing but all of its VR announcements, the same way that Meta does. The state of play opens up and starts. We get Horizon Call of the Mountain, Synapse, Crossfire Sierra Squad, Gran Turismo 7, The Foglands, No Man's Sky, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution, Switchback VR, Beat Saber, Journey to Foundation, Resident Evil 8, and then tops it off with Resident Evil 4 Remake. Everyone in the entire VR community would absolutely lose their minds with that showcase. People would think Sony has changed everything, four AAA games announced, numerous exclusives, and incredible multi-platform games. In fact, you can also even say that every single one of those games were also very successful except for two, The Foglands and Journey to Foundation. I think that if we would have gotten a VR showcase from Sony with all of these games together, and then the games continued to play out the way that they did, becoming some of the greatest VR games of all time, I think that every single person right now would be singing a different tune. That would have been the very best gaming showcase that we've ever seen in VR by a long shot. But now let's reverse the roles. Let's say Meta does some AI metaverse pitch three to five times a year, and they sprinkle in some VR announcements in there. Let's just say that they just announced at an AI event, Vampire the Masquerade Justice and Underdogs, but little do we know, they still have Asgard's Wrath and everything else in their back pocket, and none of us know anything about them. As soon as these two games get announced, the community is really stoked, but a part of the community is upset because none of these games are exclusive to Quest, and there was only two games announced, and they were expecting more. This is exactly how I see this situation with Metro and Legendary Tales. Just because Sony came out and announced two multi-platform games does not mean that they don't have incredible exclusives coming later this year. I just find it really strange that some people will look at Horizon, Village, Resident Evil 4, Synapse, Switchback, and Gran Turismo 7, and and then say with a straight face that Sony didn't absolutely kill it with exclusives last year. Name a year that any other platform did better. Because I really don't hear anyone saying anything about Meta only really having a few amazing exclusives. Nobody's making videos talking about how Meta doesn't care about VR. And real quick, while we're still on the topic of games, I want to touch on the less than stellar releases that have happened on the PlayStation VR 2. Because people love to make it front page news when the PlayStation VR 2 gets a bad port. And that's usually because it's been happening to some very great games. And those games are great on other platforms, like Hellsweeper, for example. But for some reason, the other side of the story is never told. When people point out these things, they never mention that Red Matter 2 and Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 look and play better on PlayStation VR 2 than even PC. Ultra Wings 2 just came out. It's just as good as the PC VR version, except for it has better haptics. And if you want to get really recent, 
Legendary Tales just launched on the PlayStation VR 2, and I've been playing it, and looks absolutely amazing. Better than the PC version ever looked. And I'm sure that that will improve with update 1.0. I haven't seen 1.0 on PC just yet. But the reason it looks so good on PlayStation VR 2 is because of dynamic foveated rendering. The game actually has a toggle where you can toggle it on and off, and the difference is truly jaw-dropping. I've been playing both versions side by side, and I do truly believe that the PlayStation VR 2 version looks better. The point I'm making is that it doesn't make front page news when a port comes over successfully. It also never seems to make front page news when the Quest gets the worst version of a game. These are the double standards that people are talking about. But the reason for this is because a lot of people do expect that because it's a mobile processor. A PlayStation 5 should do way better than a mobile chipset. And this is where I think that we all agree to some extent, but we just react in different ways. I think that we all expect better of Sony. We've heard of how hard it is to get through the QA process, but sometimes games will get through with horrible optimization and it makes everyone question what is going on over there. And we have to keep in mind, the people who are being very negative are coming from a good place because we all want this platform to succeed, no matter what your stance is right now. Some people see stuff like this and they say Sony does not care. And that's their opinion, and it's not invalid to see it that way. But I think all of that speculation is exactly what turns it into a big deal and turns it into front page news. It's because everyone cares, and we're not used to silence because Meta is anything but quiet. And this is that very influential thing that I talked about earlier. Meta wears VR on their sleeve as a badge of honor. They do any and everything to promote the medium of virtual reality. And coming from PC or Quest to PlayStation VR 2 and seeing Sony be so quiet, some people take the silence and and some of these botched releases, they do the math and decide that Sony doesn't care. But I do want to shed some light on something that I'm a little bit surprised that most people don't already know. And that's the fact that Sony hasn't just been quiet about VR. Sony in general has been very quiet. They don't even build up their events anymore. I even seen one person on Twitter the other day before the state of play say Sony's just calling it in now. No hype, no build up, no nothing. And this is where the true problem is with Sony right now. It's something that's undeniable and that's Sony's lack of marketing. The worst possible thing that could have happened to the PlayStation VR 2 is the chip shortage because that caused a lack of production, which caused an insane demand for the PlayStation 5. We all remember seeing them being sold for $1,000, sometimes even more. That demand led to a level of arrogance because to them, why would they need to spend the extra marketing dollars if they don't need to? They're destroying the competition without even lifting a finger. Jim Ryan at one point was practically openly bragging that they don't even have to promote the PlayStation 5. And that is the problem. Everyone in the VR community whines and complains that we don't hear anything from Sony about VR. But how often do you see commercials for PlayStation 5s or PlayStation portals? How often do you see them promoting their big upcoming games? What even are their big upcoming games right now? That's the thing. We don't even really know all of the big games that are coming out on PlayStation 5 right now. The state of Sony has been like this for a while and a lot of people blame one man. A lot of people blame Jim Ryan and they say he's more of a businessman, he's not really for the players, and PlayStation gamers have felt like this ever since he's been in charge. Maybe he's the problem, maybe he's not, but he's stepping down from the position, and if the problem really does have anything to do with him, then we should see a shift soon. In any case, we're going to have to see a shift soon, because the average PlayStation 5 user is not sold on VR. You may be able to sell a PlayStation 5 with no marketing at all, but when you take that same strategy with VR, it's not going to work because VR still needs effort involved. The silent treatment does not make anyone feel safe to buy a PlayStation VR 2 right now, and you can see that in the sales. This is the one part that I think everyone would agree that they wish PlayStation VR 2 was doing better. It was never going to do Quest numbers, and I think considering the fact that you have to buy a PlayStation 5, it's doing fine. We really don't have any hard numbers, other than the numbers that we got a while back when they confirmed that the PlayStation VR 2 outsold the original PlayStation VR in the first six weeks, selling about 600,000 units. We're nearly at the year anniversary, and there's probably somewhere around a million units out there. I highly doubt that there was any type of significant growth from the first six weeks till now, and I think largely it has to do with Sony's silence, and the other part is obviously due to the price of the headset. The market needs communication and even a better deal on the headset if we want this to be a raging success. What the VR community wants from Sony is for them to actually promote VR like Meta does, but they don't even barely promote anything anymore. So with all of that being said, just because they're not putting promotional dollars behind their products doesn't mean that they're not investing money into great quality games. As we all know, great games take years to make, and the games that are going to come out within the next two to three years are all games that have already been in development for a while. So any fear of Sony pulling out will likely not be for quite some time. Even if they made that decision now, we still wouldn't see the effects of it for years. I do believe that they're gonna give it a real shot before giving up. 
Because if you take everything that I said into consideration, then they're really not doing anything different with VR than they're doing with every other piece of hardware that they have, and even to some extent their games. The question was, does Sony care about VR? And I think that the answer is very obviously yes. Because if they didn't, why would they even show VR games at their showcase anyways? If they were done with it and didn't care, why wouldn't they just save those spots for other flat screen games? With all the developers in the world, surely they could find a few flat screen titles that are going to sell better than Legendary Tales and Metro VR. Of course the answer is yes, they care about VR. Look, I understand where people are coming from, but at the same time, it's impossible for me to deny the truth. And that's that I played some of the very best VR games that I've ever played in the history of VR on the PlayStation VR 2 in the past year. And to call that anything but success feels wrong to me. This new generation of VR gaming as a whole started with a bang and I just can't disagree more with anyone who says otherwise. Because excluding the original PlayStation VR, I have played all of the best VR games in history, and my entire all-time great list got shook up last year, and 50% of that shakeup came from the PlayStation VR 2. I don't think anyone is wrong to feel the way that they feel. And just like them admitting that they could be wrong, I could also be wrong. Maybe Sony did give up, but I really don't think so. And I really don't think that we've even seen anything yet. Time will tell. That's gonna do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a like if you liked the video at all, and I'll catch you guys next time.